So we're here for You Can Do This, Photo Organizing and Preservation. Uh, my name is Thomas McKenty. I'm in Chicago, where many are cold, but few are frozen. And uh, I apologize for having it canceled at the last minute two weeks ago. Uh, I had serious laryngitis as a result of COVID. <clears throat> so it seems that it's COVID's been with me for almost two months now. And uh, much better, though. I've got my tea. I've got my uh, water. And uh, I am in full voice and full form. So if you don't know about me, <clears throat> I've been doing genealogy for 45 years now. You might find that hard to believe. Uh, I started uh, at age 14. I living with my great grandparents in upstate New York in Sullivan County, where I grew up. And we were watching the miniseries Roots on television, if you remember it, in 1977. <clears throat> and then I got hooked. So uh, I've been doing this professionally for several years as well. And uh, what I've done is I, I, I really get into not only research methodology, but making sure that we preserve uh, the artifacts, the family heirlooms, the stories that we have uh, and pass them down and leave a legacy. <clears throat> I mean, it's, you know, genealogy is fun. Family history is fun, but I'm doing it for more than just fun. Uh, I'm doing it for my family. So before I uh, move on, let me show you that there is a handout. And the link is in the chat. If I could ask that that be copied and pasted again, if you didn't get it. It's a substantial handout, folks. I think it's almost 10 pages. Uh, the thing is, I believe in actionable education. If you're going to honor me with 45 minutes of your time, you should have a takeaway and you can get started on some of these projects, some of these things. Uh, you don't have to take a lot of notes. The URLs that I go over, uh, they're in the handout. If they're not, I will tell you. So the other thing is this is copyrighted material for your own personal use, except two things. Go ahead and share it with friends, genealogists, as long as you leave it in its format right now, PDF format with the footer. The other thing is if you belong to a genealogy society that has a newsletter, my e email address is on the top page of that handout. Let me go and show you right there. Okay, have them email me. I give this, I have this in article format that they can use for free for their newsletter. And I don't charge for this. Uh, and I just like to know who is using it. So have them contact me. All right, we're set to go because we've got a lot of room to cover. I try not to go too quickly. I'm known for breaking down complex uh, concepts and ideas uh, so that not only are they, are they understandable, but you can actually start working on them as soon as possible. So if you're like me, you probably have a lot of family photos. And some of them are rather old. This is a scrapbook, probably from the 30s. Uh, you know, with the little black corners there and the black paper. And uh, I have discovered things that I never knew about, that these scrapbooks, they're not on acid-free paper. Uh, the glue, the adhesive that's used, things break down. Uh, you know, they curl up and things like that. So there really is a race on to digitize these items as well. Also, if you're like me, I cleaned out my mother's house. She had Alzheimer's at age 59. So I cleaned out her house. She had also inherited stuff from her grandmother, my great grandmother. I mean, I had photos upon photos upon photos and what to do with them. So <clears throat> I know the planner is going to come out here. Uh, just so you know, I did spend 25, 30 years in the information technology field. And part of that was as a project manager. So I tend to be very oriented towards that, putting together a plan. Also, if you know the way I teach genealogy, I believe in a plan, like a research log. You know, I'm not just getting on Ancestry to putz around for four hours and have nothing to show with it. So if I'm going to put my efforts into digitizing and preserving these photos, it makes sense to have a plan, okay? Now, here in Chicago, and I'm not a Chicago native, I've been here 20 years, but there's a phrase that we have called make no small plans. That's from Daniel Burnham, who planned the plan of the city in 1909. But that's the same thing with my ancestors. You know, my ancestors didn't come over from Germany. They woke up one morning and say, hey, let's go to America, it might be fun. No, they had a plan, you know? And so I want you to seriously think about that. I've seen a lot of people start with just taking a box like right behind me and slapping a photo on the scanner and that's how they start. No, that's not the best way to do it. So first thing is you really need to take inventory. Now this is for display purposes really, but if I inherited something like this, I gotta know what I have. Also, 
We'll talk a minute about whether you want to take it the DIY approach, do it yourself, or outsource it. I know that's a scary word. What do you mean outsource it? I'm going to send my photos to someone I don't know. Not as bad as it seems, but you got to know what you have. And there are all these different types of photos, and you can see them here in the picture. I have tin types. I have carte de vis, which are these formats. I have old postcards. Uh, I have those brownie photos. I probably have a few of them. I shouldn't touch these with my fingers. Hey, remember these? These from the 30s and 40s. Some of them have crinkled edges, okay? So I have a lot of these different types of photos. So I need to know, what do I have? So that's the best thing is to take inventory, all right? And then <clears throat> set your standards. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, you're going to have to be familiar with some of the basic digitization standards. Now, if you have a scanner, and I have an Epson uh, V600, Bs and Victor 600 Perfection, I will show you that more in depth. Uh, this is a workhorse. That's all it does. Uh, but if you have an all-in-one device, that's not bad. A fax, photocopier, or printer. I've used those before. Uh, you need to know how high do they scan at. There's a term called DPI. Uh, it's uh, dots per inch. It has to do with the resolution. So basically from an archival standpoint, and we're using that as a standard, this is what an archivist in a museum would use. It would have to be 300 dots per inch DPI minimum. You can also go 600. Some scanners, this scanner will go 2400. Realize though, on this small photo, let's take this one, this one here. Now, if I scan this at 300 DPI, it might come out as uh, one megabyte on a good JPEG. So the thing is, uh, the more and more that I go ahead and increase the DPI, the file gets bigger. At 2400 DPI, we're talking about a 25 megabyte file size, okay? So, but you need to also set the standards for, how are you gonna rename your photos, all right? You know, when a scanner, have you ever scanned and it comes in as image 001, Thanks a lot. Image 002, thanks a lot. So let me show you what my photos, this is against my better judgment, but let's see what we can get here. And uh, let's see, I'd have to stop my share. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, there we go. Go here, I'm gonna go to my uh, Dropbox, to genealogy, to family photos, and I'll go to my Austin folder. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, this is not very well done, but watch the view. Notice I've started to name them a certain way, okay? I put the person's surname, their given name, the year they were born, because I have duplicates. This is my mother, okay? So this is a photo of her holding me uh, at age three months. And I can see right away uh, and this is a color, this is a, an improvement through my heritage, but I can see right away, hold on, that see, I know what's in that file before I double click it. So that's what we're talking about in terms of standards, okay? That's what I mean. It doesn't mean you need to follow strict archival standards, but you come up with standards and at least follow through with them, and be consistent. Uh, create a tracking mechanism. Uh, I could spreadsheet you to death. I mean, seriously, I love spreadsheets, but you can use a notebook. But the thing is here, look at this project. If you've ever seen a program called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, uh, it is free. It is project management. Let me see if I can close this. This is Trello. What I like about it, it's a lot like Pinterest. You're building boards and lists and cards. And notice what I've done. This is my plan. I have a list of things that need to be scanned. I've taken my inventory. Oh, those darn magnetic album photos. I have a solution for those, those, those albums. Postcards, what am I gonna do with the slides and the negatives? I have thousands of slides. Am I gonna do them myself? Then also I'm researching scanning equipment. These are the different things. Do, uh, what, is, what are the preferred scanner, scanners? What do genealogists use? Then also, should I outsource stuff? What if I have large oversized things that I can't fit on my scanner? What about audio tapes, VHS tapes, vinyl records? Believe it or not, these are other things that we have besides photos that we often inherit. So this is a good way to do it. I would check out Trello, that's the name of the program. I use it a lot for my business. It is free up to a certain point and believe it or not, 
I'm using the free version. So it's something that you can do. Ah, data management and backup. <clears throat> this is so important. Uh, I'll relate something from a follower two months ago. They had gone through 3,000 photos that they had scanned. They had renamed them. They had worked on the backend metadata to add descriptions. They had done all this work. The only copy was on a USB flash drive. Well, they hadn't touched it for a year and a half and decided, oh, let me take a look at these photos. Well, the first two times the USB flash drive went into the computer, it didn't work. Third time it did. You better believe uh, she copied all that information onto a different drive and up to the cloud, all right? If, you, if I hadn't said this before, I use a three, two, one backup program, three different backups, two different media, meaning they can't all be flash drives, they can't all be cloud. And then one of them has to be offsite. One of them has to be away from your original computer. Nothing worse than backing up to a drive and then leaving that drive right next to your computer and the whole office catches on fire. You lose everything. Okay, so let's talk about the inventory, the sorting and the organizing, photos and media, all right? Uh, you know, the thing is, a lot of you don't wanna do the tracking probably. I don't mean you need to write down the name of every photo, but get an idea of what you have. Do you have 500 slides? Is it something that you're gonna to want to scan? Are you gonna to wanna to preview the slides before you scan them? Uh, also, supporter of public libraries here, many local libraries will have much of the scanning equipment you, have, you need to do some of this work. This all started with 3D printing and what I call create spaces. Uh, we have them here in Chicago, where I can go to my local library, sit down, and use the slide scanner as a patron. Okay, so this is the next part. Now, <clears throat> prepare your workspace. Mine is absolutely miserable. If I were to pan down here, you wouldn't believe it, what I have and don't have here. I have a big violation. I'm sitting here with a great cup of tea next to a box of photos. So my rule is I clean off the workspace. I take my Clorox wipes. I, I get rid of all grease and everything. No liquids. In fact, one of the nice things is, if you ever seen those jigsaw puzzle boards? I bought one on Amazon. It's where you do the puzzle and it has drawers and you can pick it up and move it off the dining room table. That's a great way to do it. I get one of those and that would be your center for handling your photos. Now, the rule from archivists is this. If possible, respect the order of the original collection. What does that mean? Well, if I receive a stack of photos, paper clipped, uh, that's the order in which I'm gonna scan them if possible. The thing is, the person that put that together had some reason for organizing them that way. Uh, so try and do that when possible. Uh, also, I've received boxes where everything is just a mishmash and that's all it is. Also check the condition. Now, if you see this right here, this is from a 1903 book uh, up in Lowellville, New York, Lewis County, New York, where my ancestors are from. Uh, I was given away with the newspaper. Uh, it's about the history of the area and notice it's missing pieces. The thing is I check the condition of everything and I do triage. Anything that's falling apart like this, that's priority for digitization, all right? Anything that is in bad condition, I wanna get digitized and preserved as soon as possible. And then if really, if you can't keep the collection together, sort and organize in light groups. As I said before, uh, any tin types, those are not gonna be easy to scan because they tend to be three-dimensional. Uh, carte de vis, which is the standard. Uh, this would be the carte de vis uh, right up here. Uh, and you've seen these before where they've got the photographer stand below. Sometimes they have something on the back. Uh, this looks to be a wedding photo. Uh, unidentified. This is one of those I picked up at a flea market, and that drives me crazy, right, that, that these things wind up there. Uh, so, but group them together because things that are the same size are going to scan easier. Uh, also, little trick, you know these brownie photos. On my scanner, on this Epson scanner, you can put four of these at once, and it will create four different files, one for each of them. It's amazing. The scanner's have gotten a lot smarter than they used to be. Uh, deal with duplicates and bad photos. I laugh, this is me. 
this is me probably about seven years old. Uh, I think it was first grade of uh, Catholic school. And my mother thought it would fun, be fun for me and my brother to put her wigs on one morning. Well, I tried to bury this photo as much as I can. But also, uh, you know, sometimes you have photos that are out of focus. Then why are you scanning it? What purpose does it have? Duplicates. If you have two and three of the same photo, why? Why do you have to save it? Uh, think about that. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, for me, photos are not sentimental. Uh, I'm a steward for my family photos. Uh, I'm trying to preserve them and pass them on. Uh, but the thing is, I don't own them per se. Uh, so that's a really key point. Uh, inventory and store group items for processing. So that's what I do. Once I get things together and you'll see me sort out by stacks, then I will bind them uh, with something that is non-corrosive, no metal clips, uh, rubber bands are okay. I might use some type of archival envelope or box to do that. And then, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Do you wanna do this yourself? Or do you wanna send it out? Do you wanna outsource it? <clears throat> now, what is the problem with outsourcing? We have these stories, oh, I sent it out and I never got it back. Uh, there's some real concerns out there. I think a lot of people, they just pick the cheapest vendor that they find, which is not a smart move. Uh, but also, look at it this way. Uh, why should I buy a slide scanner for 500 slides? I don't know the technology yet. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Why not send the slides out to someone that knows what they're doing? And I could better use my time researching ancestors or something else. Okay, that's the issue. You need to weigh what's important to you. So outsourcing does mean that you're either going to drop them off at Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, whatever, who has a photo center, and then wait, and you'll get the originals back, and then the, uh, the digital slides probably either for you to download, that's where they're going now, or on a DVD or a flash drive. Uh, or, you know, do you want to do it yourself? So, so this is the tip. I'll deal with outsourcing first. And then we'll do some scanning here, some sort of scanning here with my Epson, uh, with my tips. So for outsourcing, always ask, what equipment is being used for scanning? A lot of these deals, I scan my photos. They have a deal where they'll scan a thousand photos for $19.99. I can tell you that it's older scanning technology. It's rapid scan. It's probably at 72 dots per inch DPI. You always want to know, always ask, find out from the vendor, what are you using for scanning these items? Also, what resolution is being used? That is the come on. The deal is always a low resolution. Now with scan my photos, if I wanted 300 DPI, yeah, the price is more like $59 or something like that, which makes sense. <clears throat> now, if you didn't know, uh, you would say, oh, 72 DPI has got to be fine. That really is not good for archival purposes or building a legacy. Uh, is there additional charge for large photos? That is how they get you as well. One of the hidden fees. Many of these scanning companies, now I'm not talking about Walgreens, CVS, those where you go to a photo center, pretty, you know, pretty standard. They're upfront about what the charges are. <clears throat> but if you go by some of these other places, you'll find that they charge for larger photos. So scanmyphotos.com for one instance, and I've used them before, used them as a test, they're fine. Uh, <clears throat> but the thing is that it all had to be four inch by six inch, more modern photos, and that was it. And also I could put them in an order, but it doesn't mean that they would scan them in that order. There was a charge for that if they had to scan them in the order in which I put them. So go ahead and check all those hidden fees. Is there free shipping, meaning, uh, how do you get the originals back? How much is that? <clears throat> Usually what will happen when you place your order, they will send you a FedEx box and a, and a label, a shipping label. So they'll probably pay the shipping on the, on the way out, but how much is the shipping to get your stuff back? What happens if photos are lost in the mail? I know. Uh, so, <clears throat> well, this is the issue. If you're using US Postal Service, if the vendor is using them, that's probably not a way to go. I'll show you the one vendor that I use. Uh, they are called Larson Digital. Digital, there we go. 
Uh, let me see if I can get uh, my name there. Well, look at that. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> just so you know, I do have my own page there with discount coupons. This is the company I use. This is the company that's in your handout. This is what genealogists use. Let me tell you, Larson Digital, they're in Salt Lake City. I've used them for years. I've never had a problem. Uh, they always do FedEx or UPS with tracking. Uh, they actually scan photos for NASA. Now, if they do work for NASA, you know that they've got to be good. They also look at the stuff that they handle. Uh, they're handling different negatives, uh, scrapbooks. Uh, look at discs. Remember the discs, negatives? My mother had a lot of those when I cleaned out the house. Uh, also, they'll remove stuff from old media. So this is the company. It's the only one that I trust, and they're trusted by genealogists. See, we went through, and we researched them. They used to show up at Roots Tech and all the conferences. So this is a concern. Uh, you know, I wish there was something where like a food truck, where someone came by and scanned your photos outside your door. Wouldn't that be great? Well, you're doing stuff. Or like, you know, how they, uh, how they wash the dog, dog groomers come by in a truck. I would love something like this, where actually your photos aren't going anywhere. But that is part of outsourcing. There's no way around that. Also, <clears throat> what are they using for standard features? A lot of them will add color correction automatically, which I don't care for. If I want to correct the color, if I want to change the way a photo looks, then I would rather use my own program. Uh, so that's the other thing is also, uh, how is it going to uh, handle all those things? Uh, free samples, believe it or not, that's what Larson Digital does. You can send them five photos. They will scan them send you the photos back and you will download the digital results. I believe they'll also do one negative as well. So that or one slide. So that's a good way to do it. Uh, also, where's customer service based? Uh, for, to be honest, a, a lot of companies are using overseas customer service. Uh, I find that difficult when I'm working with some of my photos and things. I want them personally based here. I know that's probably my bias, but that's usually the way I am with vendors and also here. Uh, where is the digitization work performed? Do you realize that some companies send these out to overseas to Jamaica and all these countries that I'm like, what are my photos doing in Jamaica being scanned? Why aren't they being scanned here? Uh, and so I always check that as well. Where are the photos going? For uh, Larson, I know they're in Salt Lake City. That's where my photos are. Uh, no questions about it. Okay, so it is a big decision to outsource. Uh, you know, you could hire someone locally to do it as well. There are many good, competent local vendors, but make sure you know what to ask for. Uh, ask for all the charges up front. Uh, do they do negatives? Do they do slides? And whether the slides are glass slides or all these different slides. Now we're going to get into the DIY part for your digitization projects. First thing is don't get overwhelmed. Uh, it was really difficult when I cleaned out my mother's house because we would pick up photos and they'd be sentimental and we'd tell stories. You know what? You got to be cold and calculating. You got to run triage. You know, there will be time to go over those photos and tell stories. But the thing is, do that. Also, just do an hour's worth of work and then step away or go to a different project. That's usually what I recommend as well. Are you sure you're doing it right? Self-doubts, that's part of the problem with DIY. Make sure you do your research. Uh, if you have a question, go, go out to, Wikipedia is great for information. The other site that I have there is CNET, C-N-E-T. And what they do is they review scanners and things. Uh, also, I will show you uh, in a minute, I believe it's gonna come up. You can join one of the genealogy technology groups on Facebook to ask questions. Uh, it's never bad to ask a question to do that. So let me go and see if I can find that. Against my better judgment, I'll go out here to Facebook and I will, uh, yeah, my friends always give me a hard time when I'm teaching. And I'm gonna go ahead and say genealogy uh, technology. And this is the group. It's got 22,000 members, okay? And this is a safe place where you can ask questions. I believe this should be on the handout where you can ask questions like, uh, what is the right DPI for scanning slides? Or uh, can I do slides on my regular flatbed scanner? 
things like that. You want to seek out these. The other one is called the organized genealogists. There it is. Great. And this is another group with 41,000 members, and they work on scanning. They work on many different things. And so that's where I would go if you have any doubts. A triage or scanning. Remember what I said before. Things that are breaking down now get scanned first, get preserved first. Clean your scanner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead here. Let's see what I got. I'm going to try not to uh, pull my headphones and pull my whole system. So hold on a minute for this. I've got a toolbox here. And what I have in it are things like microfiber cloth. Now, that is what I recommend with scanning, with a scanner. And here, I'm going to move that, uh, move this sucker here. Not enough room, huh? Ah, there we go. And basically, always read what the scanner says to clean. It, don't put Windex on it. You know, we're a grief family here. We have Windex all the time. But the thing is, uh, don't go ahead and do that you know, unless uh, it says you can use something with alcohol or ammonia. So usually just a microfiber cloth. And to do that, and I do it every time I start a scan because I don't want those particles. I don't want all of that stuff in there. Let me go ahead and throw this right here. Don't mean to block your view, okay? Also, notice what I did. I was a bad boy. I was not wearing my gloves, uh-huh, so. There are archival cotton gloves. I buy them a dozen at, the, at a time on Amazon. Now, there's been a great debate about whether we should be using gloves for documents and photos or just photos. This is what the archivists say. Archivists say that the gloves should be for photos only. And this is the reason. Uh, photos, you know, they, they react to the oils and the chemicals that are on your fingers. Uh, documents are different. The thing is, when you're dealing with old documents, you need that you need to feel the tactileness. You need to be able to make sure you're turning the page correctly. Uh, you can do damage to a document wearing gloves, to be honest. So that's what the vote is now. So I should have been wearing gloves when I'm actually working with these items uh, with the with the photos. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if you've ever tried to scan like uh, metals. Uh, badges, anything like that with a little bit of three-dimensionality, dimension out, that are three-dimension, you put the scanner flatbed down and a little bit of ambient light can get in. One thing that I use, and I don't have it right here, is a piece of black velvet that I put over it. And it really helps those things, the details pop. Don't forget to line it up. Now, I'm not gonna use my uh, gloves. Uh, I just wanna, uh, for expediency. Now, over here, you may not be able to see it. Let me see if I can get this uh, one put away here without bringing down the house. There we go. Uh, notice there's a lineup right here. Don't do this. Don't scan like that because then you're going to have to rotate it. You're going to have to crop it. If you go right here, then it's easy peasy. It knows uh, how to scan. Also, scan those multiple items. Now, as I said before, if I had two of these, I could scan them this way. And guess what my scanner would do? And I'll pull up my scanner in a minute on Amazon. It will actually create two different files. And those are files then they're separate. And I don't have to do one page like this. Normally in the past, you take one page like this and you would have to duplicate it. You'd have to crop it. You'd have to rename it, everything like that. Uh, do not tamper with magnetic albums. And I'm not kidding. Oh, these were an atrocity, an abomination. Do you remember these things? Well, now I've heard various stories. One person said, let me take some water here. One person said, yeah, put it in the microwave for five seconds, then it comes right off. No, thank you. I remember as archivists, we try not to do any harm. Uh, one thing that I know is true. Do you really need the information on the back of those photos? That's what it comes down to. If you really do need it, two things that you can do. Uh, you can use, believe it or not, dental floss. And I don't know if I have my dental floss in here or not in my box, but I thought I did. But always have a thing of dental floss, okay? Then the other thing is, uh, there are things that are called uh, archival spatulas. 
actually the Opec spatulas they use on the movie Breaking Bad for, for making drugs, but actually these are sold as chem chemistry spatulas. And that's how I bought mine right here on Amazon, really cheap. And the thing is you go and you actually just sort of pry lightly. Uh, I prefer the, uh, the dental floss approach, to be honest. It's the one that makes the most sense. Uh, don't get waxed, get unwaxed and take your time. The other thing is, Sometimes it's easier just to take that whole album page out, put it on the scanner, and then you're all set, okay? So the thing is, why bother taking them out if you're not going to look at the back? By the way, let me go to Amazon and find that uh, Amazon uh, perf Epson Perfection B600. This is already in your handout, uh, but this is the one that most genealogists use. Uh, it is a workhorse. Uh, by the way, I buy uh, my technology on Amazon mostly because of free shipping, but also they have a very liberal return policy. They don't charge an overstocking fee. If I really want to see it first, I go to Best Buy. I look at it in person. Then I come home and I buy it on Amazon. Okay, but this is a workhorse. It's not wireless. Uh, there's no SD card. All it does is scan, and it does it very, very well. The other thing I didn't tell you... Uh, it does have these holders for slides and negatives. That's why I have it. So if I want to do these, I don't need a separate device. I can do this all in one, all right? I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just saying this is what a lot of genealogists use. Remember to scan both sides of a photo, especially if you think, oh, I'm not sure that there's any printing or handwriting. You'd be surprised with some of these photo software programs that you can see that there may have been uh, pencil marks, there may have been writing on the back side. Go for high resolution scans. Now, here's an example. This is a photo, cherished photo. This is my grandfather and his uh, five other brothers, uh, the McKenties. And uh, this is the only copy I have. And my cousin had scanned it at 72 DPI. And there's really only so much I can do to improve the resolution. She. I don't know, I've lost contact with her. So I don't know where the original is. Uh, so always go for the highest possible. Uh, it's, it's basically, I try for 600, 300 minimum, and you always scan at TIFF, T-I-F-F -F is the format. Okay, notice it here, T-I-F or T-I-F-F. -F. Now, what is that? A TIFF format is not a compressed format. You may not realize a JPEG is a compressed format meaning that they've compressed it with the pixels so that it is manageable, especially for websites, et cetera. But the problem is you go in and out and edit in and out, you lose some of that resolution. TIFF is the archival standard. And notice the difference here. This one is 10 megabytes as a TIFF, okay? And also I always rename the file. So if you're scanning to TIFF, let me see if I can come back here. Here we go. So what I do is this. Uh, let's see if I can find my photos. Uh, so here, here are original images. And notice these are all scanned as TIFFs, all right? These are TIFFs. Look at this, this is 10.4 megabytes, all right? This one is one of my favorites. It is my mother and her seven sisters, and I would have to rotate it, et cetera, but this is saved as a TIFF, okay? Now, uh, here, here's another one. This, these are the boys. Uh, this is my grandfather, and a three. The, the fourth boy was not born yet, so I know this is before 1950. And so, yeah, but this is scanned as a tip. What I would then do is this, watch. I would save it as a JPEG down here, okay, and save it. I don't know where it's saved to, but you'll notice then is I'm gonna go and, uh, I'm gonna go and, uh, open the file location, there it is, and there it is. So that's it, this is JPEG. You're not visually gonna notice a difference, but what I tend to do also is, uh, let me just copy this over, sorry for that. Genealogy, uh, family photos, Austin. Okay. Now. You notice how this one says master? That would be the master copy. Well, the JPEG is the working copy. So I tend to do that. Sometimes I'll say working copy. I uh, notice down here, I say original. 
Okay, this is the one. This is a, an enhanced tip. So just be consistent. Uh, and my mom's down there. Be consistent with the way you name your files. Notice I'm all over the place right now for here. Ideally, I prefer to name mine, you know, this way. Uh, these are really, yeah, like this. Uh, Austin John Ralph, born 1896. This is my uh, great grandfather, probably about 1902. Uh, and there he is, that's a school photo. Okay, so I'm gonna close all these up. I apologize, I, but the thing is, that's what we're talking about here. Make sure you rename the digital file. Otherwise, it will be called image 001, image 002. You won't know what it is. As I said before, create a master image and a working image. The master image is the TIFF. You scan it, you save it. You should never have to touch that file again. You create a JPEG from it, and the JPEG is your working copy. This is the reason why. What if you do overcrop your JPEG or you do something colorization that doesn't work? You can always go back to that tip and start over. Uh, some of the photos that I've scanned are from family and I will never get a chance to scan those again. So that's what I tend to do. These are master images, they're all tips. I create a JPEG copy and the JPEG is what I work with. Uh, this one, eh, I, don't, I don't like this as much. This is out of date. Uh, there used to be a way for you to take uh, a piece of plexiglass and put it on the photo and then uh, write on the plexiglass. You know what? A lot of our digital tools for photos have, has replaced this. I really should take this slide out. I don't know many people that take the time to do this. We all know that you should not write on photos or write on the back of a photo, even if it's an archival pen. I always leave things the way I found them. It's sort of the archivists say, do no harm. Leave it in its original state. Okay. Use photo editing tools. This is one that's great. It's called Chroma Scan, Q R O M A Scan. Believe it or not, this lets you scan on it's an app, scan on an iPhone, and then you can dictate the description into the program. It's voice recognition and it adds it to the file, which is great. There's so many more tools out there. Uh, consider using metadata. Now, if you don't know what metadata is, I can't go into it too deeply, but here's an idea. Uh, let's see. No, I don't want the originals. Want the Austins? Uh, let's see, large icons. Ah, uh, here we go. This is one. This is the whole brood. I don't know how my grandparents did it with 12 kids. There are only 11 here. Okay. What if you want to identify who's in the back row? You're going to write on the photo? You don't want to do that. So watch, there is something that a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, places will let you do, a lot of programs will let you do. Uh, I'm gonna right click over this, go to properties, go to details, and I could put in right here, look at what I have. I've started to do it. Back row, left to right, Patricia, Joan, Judith, Josephine. Middle row, left to right, June, Jennifer, Lee, Alfred. Okay, I could put all that information. I could even put, it was here under properties, details. I could also put copyright information, uh, the date it was taken. And guess what? That metadata gets wetted with the digital file and it always travels with it. So I don't have a lot of time to go into that. That could be its own topic, own webinar. But the thing is look up metadata for digital images uh, and you will see that it's fairly easy to do uh, and it's something, notice how I am very consistent here in my naming of files, uh, trying to get better about it, okay? Also, invest in specialized editing tools. VividPix is one of them. The other one that I've been really using right now, and I think I wanna mention it because they have a free period, uh, is, let's see, my heritage blog. They just announced this this week. Uh, <clears throat> They have stellar photo tools, okay? And they're, they're making them free right now until February 5th, okay? And you can actually go through and upload something and colorize it. And the results are absolutely amazing. Normally, as a new member, as, as a non-subscriber, you could only do maybe 10 photos and that would be it. But they, it is an amazing, amazing program. Uh, and so you can go ahead and upload your photos. 
Uh, and then you can actually go through and scan them and colorize them. Uh, it doesn't always work, but here, uh, this is one, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I could, they even have a repair function. Look at what, look at the difference. That's the difference from what I was given. This is a tin type to what I was able to produce. Now I haven't done the repair, but the repair will help take out a lot of these blotches. So that's what I'm trying to say. Invest in those tools. This Vivid Picks for Store is worth is $49. To me, it's well worth it. It has different uh, sets of technical skills than my heritage, but it will work. And please back up your scans. There is no reason that you can't back these up. Now I'm gonna try and show you something else that I use. There it is. This is a SanDisk solid state drive, two terabytes, size of a credit card, goes right in the pocket. It is crash proof. I had a follower that put this in the washer two months ago and was able to use it. Luckily it didn't go in the dryer. Okay, so they sell these on Amazon. I've seen them at Costco at Walmart. Uh, this is the two terabyte cells for about 250, the same as that scanner. Uh, the thing is you've got to get things backed up. And then you've also had to make sure that part of that backup is in the cloud or away from your computer. So storing those. Now, when you upload photos, what we're talking about is once you've done all of this digitization, where are you gonna store the digital images, especially for safekeeping? I like Google Photos personally. I'm also on Dropbox. Uh, but when you upload those, make sure that you understand the terms and conditions. Uh, what can you upload? How can you get your stuff out? What if, what if, let's say Dropbox went out of business and they said, oh yeah, we're shut down in 30 days. You have to get all your own stuff. Did you know that people put photos up on Ancestry and they think that when they download their family tree, to GEDCOM file, they're going to get the photos. No, they're not. Uh, also, how is metadata handled? Handled. This is my great-grandmother, Frances Presner. This is a photo that has all this metadata I took time to put in. If I upload it to Facebook, guess what? Facebook strips out metadata. So do a test. Upload a photo with metadata, then download it and see what's left. Google Photos is good. Google Photos does not remove metadata as far as I know. So that's part of picking a platform to store your photos. Uh, and again, I don't use Facebook or Ancestry for storage. That's not what they're meant for. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time getting all of your photos off of Facebook in one fell swoop or Ancestry. So that's really not the best place platform for storage. Have an exit strategy, that's your responsibility. If you put the photos up there, you got to know how to get them out of there and how to get them out of there quickly if you need to. Uh, some of the must haves, uh, and I'm going to, I know that we're running into, yeah, we're okay on time. Uh, I take a multi device approach to scanning. I have my flatbed scanner. This other small one, this is the Epson, I think, V99 or V100. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it doesn't have the negative and slide template. But Epson is probably one of the best companies for scanning technology. Portable scanner. Portable scanner is great, folks, but uh, they're difficult to come by. Uh, they're no longer made. This is the FlipPal mobile scanner, which I absolutely adored. Mine is 10 years old, uh, runs on batteries. I could take it overseas and scan photos from relatives. Uh, they just don't make them anymore. This started with COVID. And uh, the Chinese manufacturer of this and another model stopped making them. I really think you should have at least one scanning app on your smartphone. Cam Scanner is a good one. Not only does it do photos, it will do a document and it will translate OCR the text for you. But the other one that I like is Google Photos as well. Uh, Google Photo, Photo Scan. And let me go there. It is called Google photo scan, I just said right there. And basically it's part of Google Photos and it's on your phone. And the nice thing is with Google phone, you know, with my tremors on my hand, I always didn't want to use uh, the phone. It takes account for that. It will line things up. And you know what's even better? What if you have a large item? Take a look at this. This is a condolence certificate signed by Harry S. Truman, President Truman in 1946 for one of my cousins that was killed in an airplane crash. Now this won't fit on my scanner, 
but I can scan it with Google Photos in pieces, in segments, and this software will stitch it together and you would never know that it was done in segments. The other thing is you might wanna look at getting a multimedia scanner. Something like this or the Scanza uh, by Kodak, it will let you do negatives, it will let you do slides and photos. This is a little bit misleading. It says it does film. You're not gonna get a DVD action uh, film. You're gonna get, you're gonna be able to take a, a photo, one little frame and turn it into a JPEG or a TIFF. So the other one is this. If you have a lot of slides, get a slide viewer, save your eyes. Also, this is good if you're outsourcing slides. If you have 5,000 slides, you're not gonna wanna outsource all 5,000. You need to look for duplicate slides, bad slides. And then that's a lot of money. At 30 cents a slide, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think that's what, 1,500 bucks or something? No, I wanna go through and pick the best slides uh, that I wanna have uh, digitized. So don't forget, also think about building a scanning toolbox, like this little box I have here. It always has archival gloves. It has acid-free folders and envelopes. Basically, all these are folks are page protectors. These are Avery page protectors. Uh, they are acid-free, and I can put the photo right in here, and they actually have some that are made for specific size photos. And it puts it in here, and it preserves it. This is what I do once I've scanned it. And then if I want, I put a card on the back, like a three by five index card, explaining what the photo is, all right? That's the other thing. It's not a matter of just scanning. It's a matter of preserving. A dental floss, remember those archival spatulas, paper clips, uh, the microfiber cloth, I have my index cards, rechargeable batteries. This is when I had the mobile scanner. I SD cards, if you have that for storage, a USB flash drive. Other tips and tricks. This can be a very emotional process. I know it very well. Uh, so the thing is, uh, allow yourself that time. But when I do the actual digitizing and scanning, I try and stay very focused on the technical aspect. Then I take a break. Maybe later that night, I will pull up the items on my iPhone. And you know we'll talk about it uh, during family time. Uh, donate your photos. This photo, actually, the, uh, in Lowellville, New York, the school and the historical society did not, did not have a copy. So what I did is I scanned it. Uh, I had it digitally repaired. I sent it to the uh, historical society, donated it, and they actually had it physically repaired. Uh, and so because it was value to them. You know, folks, what I do also, don't laugh, I will take my photos and I will scan them, donate the originals, to a society. And then if I want it in a frame, I'm going to print it out or have it printed at Walgreens or CVS and it goes in a frame and people don't know the difference. Also, don't forget to recycle your equipment. If you do buy one of those slide scanners and you scan those 5,000 slides, God bless you, consider donating that to your public library or to a genealogy study when you're done, if you're not going to use it anymore. Okay, so you can do this. Uh, and I believe that you can. This is my great grandfather. This is his uh, photo six months. And you know what? His wife started writing on photos on the front of them as she got older uh, and uh, wasn't, uh, I don't want to say senile, but she was a little bit forgetful. Uh, but, you know, this is the goal is to preserve these as much as possible uh, to get them in digital format to create a legacy and to pass this on. All right. I thank you for your time. I'm going to be available for Q&A in a minute. I do want to give you my email address. It is at highdefgen at gmail.com. If you have a question about this topic, please feel free to email me. Uh, you know, right now I get three to 400 emails a day. I, I'm not available to help you find a birth parent or pick out a laptop. Uh, I can actually recommend scanners and things like that related to this topic. So please go ahead and do that. Uh, and so what did you think of that? Who's, where's our moderator? I'm here. Hi. What'd you Hi. think of that? I thought it was wonderful. I learned so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Just have to get my hands on uh, all the photos from family members. Oh, see, that's not my problem. My problem I'm sitting on <laughs> boxes and boxes and boxes of them. You should see what's under my desk. It's not even funny. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's daunting. So we'll it see. Is, it is. Yeah. 
So, all right. So yeah. we did and have a, a few questions in the sure. chat. So sure. if I could share those with you, yeah, sure. uh, Elaine wanted to know uh, what do you use to scan oversized negatives that don't fit in the negative holders? Those I would just outsource. I would outsource. Yeah, uh, you know, some people try and do it with with this type of scanner, but it, the lighting doesn't work. Uh, so, or I would just outsource them, or maybe I'd go to my local public library and see if they have one that that is better to do that. Yeah, good question. Okay, and then somebody asked, uh, recommend a scanner that is not flatbed that scans multiple photos at a time. Oh yeah, those you have to be careful with. I can go ahead and, and show you one. They tend to be very expensive, just so you know. Uh, both Epson and Toshiba have one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and go out here and let's say Amazon uh, Epson photo scanner. And it's the fast photo. And see, it's it's yeah, it's already uh, let's see. Too fast photo. Yeah, and I believe they're running, yeah, $600. And then guess what? You can't do cart to this. You can't do things like this on cardboard, right? So if you have a lot that are from the 80s and 90s, yeah, this might be worth it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the only one that I really recommend. This and Toshiba makes one that's similar. But to me, it's a big investment. I don't know that I would do that. That's just personally me. Yeah. Okay, I Other can questions. answer the next one. Sure. <laughs> will a recording of this session be available to view again? Yes, it will. I will get that up within the next few yes. days. Yes. Hopefully it will be on the Harborfields Library YouTube channel. So look for that. I will hopefully remember to send an email. If not, right. call the library or email us. We will absolutely right. get back to you. Right. Um, Bruce would like to know what about dealing with old VHS tapes? Old VHS tapes. Now there is a, there's a kit that you can pay $49 for on Amazon, but you have to have a working VHS player to copy it over to your computer. Too much for me. I'm sorry. It's easier to take it down to CVS I think they charge $25 of a videotape, but it is being outsourced and you get it back. Now, sometimes people want it back on DVD, believe it or not, on something like that, yes. But if I was doing photos, I would want to download the files myself. So I would go, uh, I would go with one of your local superstores. I think they're fine for videotapes. Or if you if it's something that is really special, go to a place like Larson Digital and they're listed on the uh, handout. Ellen asked, what do you do with the actual photos after they are scanned? They go into uh, page protectors, into protectors, into binders. And that's it. Uh, also, I have left instructions for my family what to do with my genealogy research once I, I've gone. So they don't have a bonfire out on the front lawn as they want to. And uh, but to be honest, I, I try and donate as much as I can right now. Why not? I have the digital image. I have it backed up three ways. Uh, I don't need I don't need the original. I just I don't have I don't have that sense of you know ownership for that. I'm a steward for these images. If there's a family member that wants them, and I know that they're going to be caretakers, then they get them. That's a, and so I'm, I'm I've been known to bring the photos with me uh, to family reunions as well. The binders. Yeah. Good question. And uh, just so everybody does know that the library does convert VHS tapes for yes. you. So if yes. you wanted to bring those in, we can certainly offer them. That's great. Great. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Unless yeah, well, this has been a lot of fun. I, you know, I, this is why I did not want to postpone this two weeks ago, because I really, this is one of my passions, you know, and you can see my, uh, these are mixed tiles on the back wall here. And I also have my whole family tree done with these photo tiles. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, I have inherited so many photos, it's not even funny. And uh, so that's why I came up with this webinar, uh, because it's something, it's a race against time. It really is. And one of those things, we try and kick that can down the road. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But, you know, uh, yeah, I, I've seen too many photos thrown out. How do you think that these photos wind up at flea markets, right, or on eBay? Because, you know, someone wasn't around to preserve them and pass them on down, so. True. All right, well, thank you so much. I appreciate this, okay? Thank you, Thomas. All right, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.